गुड मॉर्निंग सो वी आर बिगिनिंग आवर उद्धव गीता चैप्टर थ्री वर्स नाइन ऑनवर्ड्स वी हैड कंप्लीटेड इन वर्स एट इफ यू रिमेंबर वर्स एट वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट द मॉथ सो वर्स नाइन ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अनदर गुरु ऑफ दत्तात्रेय and this guru is called the bee the honey bee all right so we are doing uddhav gita chapter 3 verse 9 onwards the sage should live a bee like life taking little doles of food from several houses without taxing them just so much as would maintain the body so here the biggest teacher of the tatra was b the honey bee now have you seen a honey bee how it does its work you know it goes from one flower to another flower to another flower to another flower to another flower and it takes little honey from here little honey from there little honey from there and so on and so forth i am sure as a kid you have also taken those small tiny flowers out and sucked <laughs> them we have all done that you know as a kid we also love to do something like that and another important thing in our childhood was that we had a lot of friends you know you have a friends and now in india we have a building and we have friends all over the building <laughs> and we love to go to everybody's house and see what they have uh, you know to eat so auntie will give some you know biscuit some chocolate some small stuff to eat and we want to eat from all the houses over there <laughs> i still remember as a kid going to my neighbor's house and saying Oh, you have made fish curry. Can I get fish curry? And the aunty over there will say, "Okay, I'll give you fish curry. You tell your mother to give your curry." You know, okay. So, <laughs> so it was a joke. And we always loved to that. As a child, we have always done this kind of a thing. We want to go and eat in everybody's house. I don't know about modern children. Modern children, you know, I don't know whether they share their dabbas or what. But in olden times, this was the norm. You go to different different places and take small small stuff from different places, and enjoy life. Yeah, today it will be you will order on app one from this place, one from that place, one from that place, and one from that place, and all the delivery will come. and then you will sit and eat we are not talking about that we are talking about how a honey bee gathers the honey and what is the importance of this honey she is not gathering because she wants to drink it remember that the honey bee is not gathering it in her mouth because she wants to drink it but she is taking the honey to the bee hive and it is put inside the bee hive it is stored there for someone else see right so what is the answer which my gurudev is giving he says you have to be a sage who takes honey just like a honey bee that means you are not entitled as a person who is a sadhu or a saint or a saint to go to one house and eat from there you have to go to different different places so what is the recommended number of places say okay can i go to 20 places and take it from there <laughs> no you are entitled for only four door knocks four houses 
So if you have been to Thailand or some parts of North India or some parts of South India also, you will find that there are these orange color, you know, dress that they wear, they will come, they will knock on their door and they will ask for some food. And everybody gives certain amount of food. Now, what is the food that people give? Normally, people don't give fresh food at all. When you have somebody at the door who is begging for food, the first thought is, what is there in the fridge from yesterday? Can we give pass it on to this person? Anyway, it's going waste. No. This is the attitude of a normal human being. They are not willing to give fresh food to anybody. Especially a sage or a saint, if he comes knocking at your door, what are you going to do? Okay. And today the kind of people that are knocking at the door, they are basically con men. They don't want food, they have come to take money from you. So we are all afraid. So this teaching has little to do with food. It has more to do with something different. So let us see what exactly is the meaning of these words. One, in literal sense, in literal sense, when you are on the path of spirituality, you cannot take, you cannot be a guest in someone's house for a very long period of time. You see, you just have to take little from one place, move on, take little from another place, move on, so on and so forth. This is what you are supposed to do. This is the literal meaning. Now let us see what it actually means. So we go to the next verse. So verse 10 says, The clever man should take the essence out of all sources from scriptures, small as well as great, like a bee from flower. This is the essence. A clever man should take the essence out of all sources from scriptures, small as well as great, like the bee from, from flower. So let us say you have gone to meet some people. Don't go over there and show your great attitude, you know, the great ego that you are. I know everything. Never show this thing to anybody. You have gone over there for a reason. You have gone over there so that you can learn. At every different place, every different book that you open, you have to keep on learning. It may be the smallest of the person, you know, the tiniest of the person also, small baby also. You have to learn from that. So the true meaning of the bee is to take the right stuff, which is called honey. Honey means the right kind of knowledge from different people, places, scriptures, so on and so forth. Right? What is this right thing that we are supposed to do and not the wrong stuff? Now, if I have to learn about the history of World War II, the first thought that comes to my mind is, oh, it was a very, very bad thing that happened during World War II. You know, we immediately think of Hitler, gas chambers, concentration camps and the world divided into two. We are not talking about the wrong things, remember. We are only talking about the right stuff. What do you learn from that? Technology. The Germans have U-boats. They created rockets. 
So many things were created during that time. Today, some of the best vehicles in the world come from Germany, like BMWs and Mercedes Benz and so on and so forth. I'm sure you know that. It's an aspirational car to buy, isn't it? If you have a BMW, naturally you'll say, I have a BMW. Don't you see that? Some of the latest technology that we have in manufacturing has come from Germany. If that thing would not have happened, don't you think we would have got we, we could have got any of these things? It the reason why it happened is different. But what came out of it is different. So what you should take out of all these things, whether it is good or bad, is only the good. That is called honey gathering. See, everybody has two kinds of nature. One good, one bad. You know, everything in this world is divided into three categories, which is Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. You know this. Everybody knows it. We all have this intermingling of these three gunas. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. So every person is Sattvic, is Rajasic and Tamasic also. Yes, today the Tamas is far greater. You can see people who may be completely lazy. They will not even get up. They won't even do the job. If you tell them something to do, they will do it after a very long time or they won't do at all. Rajasic kind of nature will say, I am the greatest. I can do. You don't know me. I What I am telling you is the best, the right, so on and so forth. The person is very arrogant, egoistic. And every person is like this, by the way. Sattva. Our job is to only look at the sattvic guna of the person. You see, I'll give you one example. Most of you have watched the video of this great industrial, I mean this great billionaire, billionaire called Jack Ma. I'm sure all of you have seen. Now Jack Ma, the moment he starts talking, in most of the videos, he talks of trashing institutions and countries. First and foremost, he will talk a lot of wrong stuff about institutions. I was not admitted to this institution, I did not get this and so on and so forth. He will make a kind of comments which are not good in certain cases. That is one aspect which is Tamasic aspect of his. The Rajasic aspect is I became so rich, you know, I am like this, I am like this, I, 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 I. People should work for 18 hours a day. Okay. Can you see Rajas in that person? Yes. Rajas. Same person as Tamas. Rajas. Now we talk about Sattva Guna. The moment he graduated out, his principal of the college came and said, See, you have to become a teacher. And Jack Ma took teaching for six years of his life. And he taught students and he interacted with them, though he did not want to do any of those things in the beginning. But he started loving what he's doing. He got a lot of opportunities. But he gave back in the beginning. So what can we learn from these three gunas? Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. So I will take the one thing which is good about him, which is I like. He became a great teacher. And he taught a lot of good stuff. And today if you look at him, what exactly is he doing? You know, he is trying to go away from his company. Isn't it? He has taken a back seat. That's what he says. He has become an investor. 
on today he goes to different different places giving talks and lectures and giving motivation to people isn't it now remember the what he learned in the beginning as a teacher is coming back to him very handy so he can teach the world so always take the good stuff out of people so what i said about world war 2 we take the good stuff out of it the world came together the light forces came together and america became a great nation india if you remember way back in the 60s 70s and 80s india was a very very poor country india was shown with a begging bowl today we are a trillion dollar economy you know 3 trillion more than 3 trillion 3 trillion dollar economy it's not a joke to be such a big country and make so much of money and jobs and so on and so forth today every company which is a very major organization in the world wants to bring its manufacturing and where the other things into india look at google look at uh, microsoft look at apple apple is setting up units over here microsoft is there amazon my god it's such a huge office they have set up why are they interested in coming because we may have something good to offer to the world isn't it so the the bee does exactly like that it takes the honey the little bit of honey so we are supposed to take only the good stuff from everybody not the bad stuff remember that never take anything which is derogatory or bad or something which is not worthwhile we take small stuff which is worthwhile which is really going to take us ahead when you know in your office in your workspace what happens there are lots of people that you meet and when you meet this kind of people what happens you see that oh that person was very arrogant he did not talk nicely to me he did this he did that blah 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 your mind keeps on telling you all these things can you take out something good from that person instead of saying something bad can you take out something good from that person and use that so that knowledge will come in handy to you right likewise every scripture has something good can we take out only the good stuff from there otherwise just look at say a bhagavad gita there is dhritarashtra over there who is listening to the story sanjaya who is telling him the story the third person is arjuna fourth person is krishna and let us take krishna as an example you know krishna had 16108 wives oh my god what are you talking about he was living a life of a king okay he ran away from the battlefield krishna is one of the greatest teachers of mankind you have to take the good stuff out of it if i go to dissect the real version the real reason why these things happened it will take me time but can i take only the good stuff from there there is always the good stuff even in the bhagavad gita i don't have to become like dhritarashtra i don't have to become like arjuna i have to become like an arjuna who listens to his teacher not somebody who keeps on cribbing i don't know what i'm going to do you know everybody cries like this i don't know guru ji what am i going to do this is like this the defeatist attitude is not good so take that attitude where arjuna listens to his guru and goes takes up the weapons and fights the war this is what we got to understand and take 
all right so the clever man should take the essence out of all sources from scriptures small as well as great like the bee from flowers so take the essence out and see what it is all about in the same way there are lots of you know in our daily life we see movies we see a lot of movies and we want to say something good or something bad about it. So we will say, you know, that recent movie, it was so terrible, no story, nothing, nothing, nothing. Why are you saying like that? Can I see something good in it? Very good songs. See, there you got it. The full movie was all about slaughter, killing, this, that. Is it? Can you take out something good about it? The acting was good or something like that? And use it in your daily life. So this is what we have to take out. And use it for the good purposes only. We move to the next verse. Chapter 3. Verse 11 from the Uddhav Gita. The sage should not store arms for the evening or the next day. Either the hands or the stomach should be his receptacle. He should not be a holder like the bee. Another great example. We are using the same bee as an example. You know bee I told you what it does. It takes the honey and then it goes and stores over there. In the beehive. So. What is my Gurudev saying? You have to not be like a bee. First it was like a bee. Now not be like a bee. What is the good out of it? We have to take the good. Remember this. A bee likes to store honey. You have seen the ant also? The ant takes all the you know, sugar and everything and she goes and stores it somewhere. For a rainy day. Now I want you to think very carefully in this world. You have saved so much of money, so many things for a rainy day, huh? for my retirement, for having a very, you know, good life in my end. Think, do you remember your own father, mother? Grandfather or somebody who really enjoyed their life when they were dying? Think very carefully. They hoarded money. They kept everything in one place. They had taken out insurance policies. They had taken out fixed deposits. They had invested in stocks and shares and this and that and so many things. What happened to that money when they were in their last stages of life? Nothing happened. Somebody else came and took it away. I still remember my own uncle. He had kept a lot of money in the bank. And when he was about to die, there wasn't a single soul near him. All his money had got exhausted. There were some people from outside who helped him. They raised loans and they tried to take care of this person. I want you to think very carefully. You cannot keep anything aside because it's going to come in handy. God is never going to give something like that to you. Remember this. It, is, it doesn't work. You see, the honey bee gathers all the honey and puts it in a hive. Right? Do you think the honey bee gets to eat it? No. The honey gatherer, the man, comes and burns the entire thing down. He kills those honeybees. In India they do that. Or 
wherever they gather honey, they squeeze the honey out. And the honey bee doesn't get anything out of it. So I hope you get this example very clearly. So if you want to be on the path of spirituality, why are you bothered about tomorrow? Do you get what I am saying? Why are you so much bothered that I need to save for a rainy day? I have to be like a bee. I am not saying you cannot work hard. You have to work hard. But what is this that you are trying to do? Trying to, you know, put the money aside here for this, for that, for that, for that. It's no use. People gather money for, you know, lots of people are missing today because they have very important work to do. Maybe tomorrow is Ganesha, no? That's why they are very busy trying to decorate the Ganeshas. Think about it. People have this great habit of thinking that tomorrow is another day and I got to save money for it. I am going to get married. My daughter is going to get married. My son is going to get married. So I am going to keep a lot of money aside for the marriage. It's in India we call it dowry. It's not a good stuff by the way. First and foremost dowry I abhor. The exchange of money is not good. People Keep aside money for getting married, giving it, taking it and so on and so forth. I have two marriages right in front of me, happened just two and three years ago and going in complete ruins. The people are begging. They call me and they tell me, Guruji, my, my life is in ruins. The husband will call me separately. The wife will call me separately. Now these people have got married just two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you the details about it. Somebody has a child. I want to get out of this marriage. I hate this thing. And by the way, so much of money was spent on marriage. Gold, jewelry, these, that, so many saris, so many things gathered. And the marriage was in ruins less than six months from the day they got married. And what happened to the money? I have my own relative, a distant relative. They had to return pots of money back to the girl because the marriage was over. And they spent lakhs of rupees trying to get married. You know, they have those five days, six days, seven days of wedding, so much of money that they spend on that and they, you are not even sure what is going to happen. People gather money for building houses, you know, and finally what happens? They don't even stay in that property. They don't even stay in that property. They don't know how to take care of it and it is just going to the dogs. You see, in Goa where I was, I met a person who stays in another country and he comes once in a few years to take care of his property. This person's house is in complete ruins. He says, I spent money many years ago. I put up all the fitting fixtures and everything. I gave the house on rent. In few months time, the person left and went and then the vandals came in and they destroyed the entire house, removing all the plumbing and everything. So I put it back again, 
again it is gone. So what is the point of just keeping the house? It's a huge property on the seafront. And nobody stays in it. In Goa, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of houses which are lying vacant. Same as in Bangalore. Same across India. Gurgaon, Noida, Hyderabad. All houses are lying vacant. People have invested money in the houses and it is not paying them at all. So what is a sage supposed to learn from this? You want to be a sage, so learn from this. What is it that you have to do? Don't try to store arms or food or anything like that if you are going to be in spiritual. Don't bother how your next month is going to be. When you believe in God, when you are a spiritual person, God takes care of everything. The material worldly person may not like what I am teaching. The material worldly person will say, you know, what he is teaching is all nonsense. You see, the greatest story about Oprah Winfrey. She says, and the one who started that OWN network, Oprah Winfrey network. This gentleman, the person that worked with her and who is a partner, he says, after watching many people, I realized something. It is the passion which makes a person great. So it is the passion which Oprah is putting in her shows which is making her great. You see, the world says you got to be passionate and work really hard, have aspiration, have this, have that. And spirituality tells you the first word in spiritual is called dispassion. Dispassion. The whole world says on the other side attachment. You got to have wife, children, family, this, that, so many things. Spirituality says detachment. The third word, discrimination. Spirituality says, see God in everything. Material world says, that person is a villain. He is not a good person. She is not a good person. Look at North Korea. Look at this country. Look at that country. Hmm? They are bad people. How can you see God in them? Do you see this difference between these two? The material world says, be passionate, be attached and see good and evil. Spirituality says, become dispassionate, detached and see God in everything. So which one is right? See, what is right, this or that? <laughs> well, we are not bothered about the right and the wrong. We have to see what is the end result. Isn't it? Is the end result which matters to you? Correct? I want you to think, what is the end result? End result is old age and death. Isn't that the end, end result of everything? Old age and death is the end result of everything. And now think about old age. Old people. We have so many old people around us. Do you think their passion has taken them anywhere? Huh? Do you remember that person Hugh Hefner from Playboy? Passionate to the core. What happened in the end? Nothing was left. Nothing. Look at every old person, including Charlie Chaplin. Right? Think about it. I'm sure you remember Margaret Thatcher. Of course, you remember. Where is she? What happened to her legacy? 
it's gone. Do you remember all the great politicians of this world? What happened to their legacy? Vanished. In India, take the legacy of the most passionate person, businessman, Vijay Malya. What happened? Nothing happened. So, I don't want you to see the beginning of it, I want you to see the end of it. See where it is taking a person. Does it really help? Attachment. See, attachment I am talking about. Do you remember Mr. Dhirubhai Ambani talking about his family? Today, his two sons are separate. What happened to that attachment? It doesn't pay in the long run. I hope you understand what I am saying. There is one person who makes a business empire and in the end dies a pauper. Hmm? And then what happens to him? Think. Now I will tell you about those people who live life like this. This hand and their stomach is the only receptacle that they have. And I want you to think very carefully. Think very carefully. What do you remember 2500 years ago? From 2500 years ago. Do you remember any of the kings and the queens and any of these people around? No. The only person that you remember during that period is Gautam Buddha. Isn't it? That man lived <laughs> on torn clothes and he went out begging with a begging ball. Right? 2000 years ago. What happened? We remember another man without any clothes, very few clothes on his body put on a cross. He didn't have any money in hand. His legacy is still there. Christianity. Jesus Christ. I am talking about Jesus Christ. 5000 years ago. How many people remember who were the kings and the queens and this and that? But I am sure you remember Krishna. <laughs> See. I mean, have you seen Krishna wearing fancy clothes? Couture. You know, mine from Paris. Couture he was making clothes for him. I don't remember. I remember him only with one sash like this, one dhoti, I know, one, you know, one feather of peacock stuck in his hair with one flute and standing in an S. He doesn't stand straight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can only think of that. Shri Ram, just prior to him, what do you remember of him? You only remember of him going to Lanka. See, what happened after he came back to Ayodhya? Did he wear some fancy clothes and did he put on crown on his head? There is no story of that. Hardly anything. But you still remember him going to the jungles. You remember those things. So now I want you to think about the legacy that you are going to leave behind. What legacy are you going to leave behind? Gathering money, which is not going to be yours by the way. You build a house where you are not going to stay. Some person from somewhere will come and take it away. Your own children are not going to get it by the way. So whom are you gathering this thing for? So passion. Does it help in old age? No way. No way. There are lots of people, you know. They are very lusty. You know, when they grow at a certain age, I have got prostate cancer. Is it? Wow. Why? 
I got this cancer, I got that cancer, I have these problems, I have that problems, I have blood pressure, I have diabetes. I went, I underwent two open heart surgeries. Okay, what happened to all the money? It never helped them at all. Let me tell you this much. No money came in handy. Nothing came in handy. And relatives, nobody was around. The person was lying alone in the hospital bed. Nobody to take care. I have a family. The family gives two hoots to you. You see, in one of the places where that I had been, the person is lying dead in front of me. And there were 20, 30 relatives around that dead body talking about the property issues. And now they should be bothered about taking the body for funeral. They are bothered about this fellow, you left behind so much money, blah, 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 blah. It went on for a very long time. See, this is how it is. You make a property, it doesn't come in use to you at all. What is the way out? Don't become like a bee. The previous verse, become like a bee. Take little from everywhere. But don't hold it. Don't keep it aside. It's of no use. Can you make good use of the money and the skill sets that you have got? Can you make use of them? Take only the good stuff from everywhere. Make use of the skill sets, the money, the power, the fame, whatever that you have. Can you make proper use of it right now? Instead of thinking that there is tomorrow is another day. There is no tomorrow is another day. There is no another day. Nobody gives a damn for your another day. The last verse today, verse 12 from chapter 3 says, The mendicant should not store for the evening or the next day. One who does so is destroyed with his store like the bee. I will tell you a story and then I will end this satsang. There was a sadhu. Okay? Every day, he would go to a nearby place where he got food to eat. Hmm? So, he would eat that food and keep it aside a little bit. One day, he got double the amount of food. So, he brought the food, he ate half of it and half of it he kept on the windowsill of his small kutia, of his hut. During the night, the rat came and ate it away. This happened many times. He said, whenever I have extra food, I keep it over there, the rat comes and eat, eats it. I should get a cat, because the cat will eat the rat. So he goes and he gets a cat. Naturally, the cat's habit is to go and eat the rat. So she catches the rat and eats it. But now remember, he may be keeping the food. That food is not liked by the cat. The cat is more interested in eating rats and now the rats are not there. So what is the cat going to eat? So every day she will just keep on going. Meow, 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 meow. So this Sadhu Baba had to go and get little milk, which needed money. So he said, now what is a good thing for me to do? I should get a cow. So that the cow will give milk and then the cow's milk can be given to the cat. I can also drink the milk. So somewhere he gets a cow. So when he gets the cow, the cow moves, the cow has to go out, it has to go and graze and the grass has to be there and so on and so forth. You know, if you have some animal in your house, you know the amount of care that you need to take? Just try keeping one dog and see for yourself. 
or one cat. Yesterday the cat was neighbor's cat. He bought such a big rat and it was lying on my front porch. Okay. And it was eating away to glory. I had to throw that out. Hmm. Just imagine that. Now imagine this is what happens. So he brought the cow. He had to build a cow shed. Now full day went in tending to the cow. So he said, you know what? I think I will have somebody look after the cow. He says, the best thing for me to do is get married. So that a woman will come and she will take care of the cow. So he got married. So now he has a cat. He has a cow. He has a woman. And then came children. And instead of becoming a sadhu, he became a material worldly person. And instead of they working for him, he had to work for them. And now tell me what is the end of the story. You yourself know. A mendicant should not store for the evening or the next day. One who does so is destroyed with his store like the bee. The beekeeper comes, you know, takes the honey, goes away. Likewise, I am telling you this. In the material world also, you try putting some money somewhere, you try building houses, you try buying things and keeping it, storing somewhere. End of the day, it's not going to come to you. Somebody else, some honey gatherer is going to come and take it away. All your honey and money and everything will go away. Remember that. It will, you will never be able to enjoy it. This is the law of the world. This is how God has made the law. You plant a tree, the fruits are not yours. Somebody else is going to come and eat the fruits. Try planting a tree and see for yourself. I hope you got your answer. The best thing for us uh, human beings to do, take out good from people. The good stuff only. Don't see the bad. Use it so that you can grow in your life. Don't try to hold. Don't try to gather and keep it for some rainy day or something like that. This is purely there for spiritual people. I gave you the idea of material worldly and the spiritual people. Don't try to keep for tomorrow something. Live every single day of your life. Work hard. Every single day. Earn your living. For that day. And be happy. So when you go in the end, you don't have to think, after me, what is going to happen? Why are you bothered? Who is going to take care? What is going to happen is not in your hands. Don't bother yourself about all these things. Okay? So, here we are going to stop. We have done till verse 12 from chapter 3. And I will see you all next week. Have a very happy Ganesh Chaturthi tomorrow. Bye. Take care.